Wait, do we not have a longer HDMI like cable? Very comfortable chair. Yeah, I'm saying. Don't yeah, we do. With the, with the chair legs. Are you sure we're live? Zoom, and then go pay your question. <laughs> I'm pretty saw, sure that's how it worked. I saw uh, somebody post. Would you like this chair? Not good. Fuck yeah, I like that chair. I saw somebody post once. Would you like that chair? No, I'm just like, can you take it from me if you want? Oh, I'm moving. I'm just not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. This is a fun one. Sorry. It's all fun. It's all good. Let's just get our shit together. Get your shit you together blob so we could be. Blob of spaghetti in the corner over here. I picked up the, that blob of spaghetti and was like, this is too much. <gasps> all right, another <laughs> one. Should you guys not have the comfy chairs? I don't know. We don't want to get too comfortable. We'll fall asleep. Live on camera. Sam and Jeff will fall asleep. That's the kind of broadcast I want to see. Let me get a comfy chair. No, it's live captioning. What's that? YouTube is live captioning us right now. That's insane. Oh, wait, wait, is it? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome to You Can't Say That. This episode of You Can't Say That is brought to you by World in Conversation. Go talk to someone right now in the world. Have a conversation. <laughs> <in the> world. <laughs> with Go talk to Go someone in the world. Do you want a different chair, bro? Converse. No, I'm fine. Actually, I'll go get do one. It. I'll go get one. You sit down. You talk. Great decision to do. We're live, so. Oh, we are live? I mean, it's like the pre-show, so. This isn't the start of the actual show. You mean, wait, are people, or is anyone watching? Nine people. Oh, dang, all right, hang on. Oh, dang. nine people just saw me be dumb. How can I check the audio? Jeff has that. Great, because it's making me nervous that I don't know what's going on with the audio. Dude, we have to okay, we are, <laughs> this is Sam here. We are just getting started, and we're still in testing mode with the podcast, so we've got a couple new things happening. And, uh, his laptop. What about my laptop? She's wondering why it's forward blinking. Is it okay? That something, something plugged in. I, I wasn't that was my question. Away. I wasn't sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, I wasn't sure if something wasn't plugged in all the way or what. That's what it seems. All right. Let me see where we're at here. Check, check, check. So. We're gonna have to. And yeah, that's much better. Check. This microphone's so weird. I might just hold it. Do I have to reframe them all? Yeah, you might. Yeah. Because you guys did not have. Hey, watching from Kansas City, Kansas. Welcome. So whoever this time is in Kashmir, it'd be really. Can anybody call in today? No. We don't have the audio you letter. Listen, you so this hear. time, um, listen, I'm so I'm speaking to you, whoever you are. Next week, we're gonna, we'll do a podcast at this time. We're going to do this weekly every Friday at noon, uh, New York City time, Eastern Standard Time. It'd be really nice to have a conversation with you about what's happening in Kashmir. So maybe you could call in and we will, um, yeah, we could just talk and get a chance to hear from you. I'm really fascinated with them. Um, so if you're into that, let us know on the chat and maybe send Jeff an email. Jeff, J-E-F-F at worldandconversation.org. And then we'll arrange it. Or uh, if it's better or easier, so, uh, staff at social19.org and they'll send it to me that way. If that's easier to remember, but the but certainly um, it'd be best if you could be on audio and on video. So if you could be on camera, but maybe you don't want to be on camera. Maybe you just want to be on audio. So um, let us know for sure. And uh, so again, we're just getting started here. We're gonna starting next week. We'll be in. It'll be like the final level of testing of this podcast, and then we'll be really rocking it. So it feels really good. And the reason for this, uh, you can't say that for the Friday 
for this Friday conversation is that I don't get a chance to say the, many of the things that I really like to talk about in class just because it's I can't I can't talk very much once I if I talk for longer than about five minutes people start to lose interest and that's understandable just because of the way we've sort of shaped the class and so um, it's really for me it's an opportunity to uh, just say some things get a little deeper into the subject matter especially because most of the people in that room are between 18 and 22 years old and you know, haven't thought about a lot of these issues. And so I, I can only go so deep. And I think a lot of times people who watch the, the watch live or watch the stream have more advanced thoughts about things. And so, so I, I don't know, I, I don't know this to be true. Well, so same with is true with people in the classroom, but would like to kind of go deeper in some things. And I just can't do it in a large room like that. When so many of the of the people haven't thought a lot about the issues so we have to always kind of keep breaking things down and which is fun i enjoy it but i also enjoy thinking at a deeper level so um and it's going to be better for people who are watching the stream from another country because we're earlier in the day yeah yeah so that makes it yeah i know we have people from uh the uk watching and so it's like only 6 p.m there instead of f like 10 o'clock and in, in Florida is kind of like another country as well, well getting I mean, pounded by another hurricane. He, so. <laughs> he messaged yesterday on the live stream and he said that uh, <laughs> he was watching, he was like, I'm forgetting the hurricane. I'm just paying attention to class. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Hey, so uh, I had a, a couple things that were, um, that kind of jumped out at me. And if, if anyone, you know, has any questions, um, you know, put them in the chat for sure. But once again, we're we're really um, for for today and and next Friday, we're really working on the technology, but um, and getting it down before we really officially start to put together the the structure of what this podcast is going to look like. But mostly, it will be reflections on the class as we had it, and uh, you know. The, the thing yesterday, a couple things really jumped out for me yesterday um, that I realized now I, I want to go back and talk about in the semester. Definitely want to talk about hair. And so Darnisha and Joy, who are here with us in the room, hang on a second. I'm just going to move the camera so you can see. Which, of course, they're not going to like. They yeah. both have hair. <laughs> <laughs> All four of us are human beings who have hair. Some of us, some of us more than others. Yes, yeah, some have less. Um, but uh, I was thinking, you know, it'd be really, really nice. I want to do a, a a full class, maybe not a full class, but like a really pretty serious class on hair. And I was thinking it'd be nice if I could bring up. Um, I don't know, like uh, maybe six to eight in women, right? Not men, because women have different thoughts on this. But in particular, maybe have a conversation between black women and then either both white and Asian women, people and women of African ancestry and then European and Asian ancestry. And just talk about hair, you know, the politics of hair, the 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 sociology of hair, the psychology of it, et cetera, and in particular, you know, give a a, a voice to women of African ancestry just to kind of you know get a sense of that. So I'm going to jump back over to you. I'm just going to really quickly hop, take, get my mic over to Darnisha because I, I just want to hear what you think about that, like who I would choose and how I would pick them and so on. So. Yeah, okay. I have a voice. So, um... <laughs> we really should have had a, a fourth camera yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> um, should I turn one of these cameras so you can see uh, me? Yeah, oh yeah, hang on. Let me do that. I got it. Let me, let me hook you up. Let me be the camera out. Cool. Um, I really think that is, like, a really good idea to have not only, like, just the black women talking about it, but, like, bring up, like, white people, too. 
Because you hear a lot of stories of like black ladies going places and white people going like, oh my God, can I just touch your hair? Like, can I feel it? And it's like, no. And they don't understand why they can't and why it's a weird thing to ask. And it might just be cool to open up that like line of dialogue to do that. So what about, so let me just ask you this. What about just some of the, just like the inner politics of hair for black women like mm. what, what about what do you mean by inner politics you know just like the inner like the 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 internalized experiences that black women have around their hair not just the sociological one like the one okay. that you just said is one but just the this 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 idea of how powerful the sentiment in the black community so often among women in particular it's just like yeah who like their hair don't like their hair okay Good hair, bad hair, you know, there's a it's really deep and Yeah. And yeah. is it okay? Is my hair okay? Is it acceptable? Is my hair okay? Is it acceptable? Which means am I acceptable? Am I yeah. okay? Yeah, and it starts off like when women are really young, especially black women, they're taught that like your hair is either like done or it's nappy and you always are like in the process of either getting it done or like worrying about it. does it look okay, like can people tell that like my hair is like curly underneath all this pressing and mm -hmm. like a lot of young girls go through like a relaxing process like mm -hmm. a perm to make it look straighter and sometimes parents are like yeah it's just to keep your hair manageable but then it damages the hair and then the girls grow up not understanding that the curls that they have are like nat like they're nice they're natural and then you have situations like being brought to like a lot now a lot more so now that like natural hair in the workplace isn't a good thing and people are not what would be the word not pre not persecuted prejudiced against what am i thinking of just or, like it's in some ways discriminated against discriminated but, against so yeah. they feel like like natural hair isn't done like i saw a story on twitter that was i came into work like the girl had her hair and it looked like mine and she got sent home yeah, it's unkempt. Yeah, unkempt yeah. And the, I think the manager sent her home and said, um, oh, well, you should have combed your hair. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Like, that, that's deep, right? Like you, yeah. The, the, now, it's true people of, of European or Asian ancestry, right, if you have, say, really thin hair mm -hmm. or really dry hair or really greasy hair. But most people don't, and that's... You know, it, and so it's you know again, it's not like hey, if I have, if I'm of European ancestry, my hair is sort of straight or whatever. It's like I'm great, I feel great, it's all good. No, there's some, but it's ju it's just a different thing. So anyway, I was thinking we could do that. That would be a really really good thing. So. Yeah, I, I think with the different ethnic groups, it's good as well. Because I think wait, hang on one second. You gotta hop on. You gotta hop. Yeah, on. can I? Like, yeah, you can. You can move oh, over. To the other side. <laughs> Thanks. I was going to say that I think it's a good idea to add different um, cultures, different ethnic backgrounds to the conversation. So it's not just a black and white conversation, as a lot of the topics in class tend to be, but also so that it could expose other students to what hair and Asian culture means, whether it's long. Is there a correlation between having keeping your hair long with being royal? how it is with the different conversations of this, p how Asian people view skin tones. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the difference between white culture and actual European culture yeah, today. Right. Yeah, we have a few Europeans in class this mm -hmm. semester, which would be really nice. I've never, um, recently I haven't taken advantage of that to have Europeans actually talk about ways in which you know, when you when we in the United States talk about people as being European Americans, and we're really far from being European, many people, mm -hmm. most people, um, that that there's you know, something about that, like African Americans, and mm -hmm. that how, how many Black Americans really know almost nothing or yeah, almost nothing about Africa, and have almost oh, really no connection to Africa except the DNA, their DNA. Um, and yet we use that. We it's a similar thing with European Americans, mm -hmm. Asian Americans, whatever. So yeah, it's you might want to hold that mic close. Hold your What's that? You might want to get close. 
closer. Okay. I'm literally holding this mic. <laughs> do you do you like the addition I have? Yeah, can we? Do you need to get close with this one? Let's zoom in on this. Community. It's always better to get close. It's Technically okay. speaking, you're supposed to be able to do this, and that's the distance you're supposed to be from the mic. But like, you can get closer. Yeah, someone that that Jamali mentioned that the case of the, like the that wrestling the black wrestling athlete. Oh, like, with the dreadlocks. Yeah, they cut his hair. Oh, yeah. So, his dreadlocks off. His locks well, off. I understand. Like I, I, <laughs> I get that you have to like have a certain like hairstyle when you're wrestling because like if you get your hair like pulled like that's gonna hurt. But the I think the way that the coach was like she hacked at his hair. Yeah, she yeah, didn't, like, carefully that, try and, like, make it. an official, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, that, that was a disrespectful part to me. Yeah, that was pretty bad. That, there was no care. There was no, like, oh, like, he has to live with this after. It was just, we have to cut your hair. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's, tr it's, and I mean, it's disturbing. I, like, I have friends who were wrestlers in high school, and they had to do the same thing, but they were, like, white kids. They weren't, like, he had, it's not like they had a specific hairstyle, and it was, it was... Mm -hmm. It's just a different thing. Yeah, it's political, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, and it's not just, it's personal, it's political, it's sociological, it's psychological. So anyway, I was thinking just from yesterday's class, that was one topic that came up that I thought, okay, we really need to revisit that. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I, I really wanted to spend more time on, and maybe we will, and I, I know I did a few years back, was uh, cross-cultural adoptions because... I thought I thought it was nice that we we kind of aired that out a little bit in class, but the issues are just so immensely complicated and really deep. And one thing I didn't talk about in class um, were, was the 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 additional pressures that are that are on people who are multiracial um, and who are adopted cross culturally and cross nationally. And so we have, you know, the data I have seen are. The, the higher rates of addiction uh, among people who, you know, we, we, the more, the more people feel ungrounded in their worlds, right? Whatever the reason is, right? The, 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 the greater the opportunities to s sort of uh, experience just detrimental behaviors like addiction and so on, right? So at one point in time, I know about 10 years ago, I had data that were showing that multi, people who are multiracial, who identify as multiracial, had the highest rates of addictions. Now, I don't know if that's still true, and that's the, the thing about, you know, sort of always having to remember data and then remember where data actually came from and if they're still valid today, if they, you know, where what it is and how it is. But my guess is that people who are adopted cross-culturally also... Um, struggle internally in a wide range of ways, and and I, and just given what the two young women in class were saying yesterday, just it's just about their kind of sense of self, right? The 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 me, the you know in sociology we have the I and the me, and the me is our sociological self, and the I is that kind of internalized sense of self, and so the their me was you know really just kind of in some ways just kind of lost right in their inability in their family in this place where you want to be able to speak your truth more than anywhere else the inability to even articulate what was going on not that their parents didn't want to hear it but just their inability to put it into words and so i am uh, i thought that would be really cool to go back to because my guess is we're going to see growing numbers of people who are adopted and raised in families outside of the families of what would be identified as their identifiable ancestry. So um, that is pretty. Okay, we need to take a break for a second. So I gotta move your mics again. Because they're gonna have that mic, and Sam's gonna have that one. All right, hang on, we're Just because that one here. can pick up more yeah, that's wide fair. range, and this one's more. This one you can easily move. Yeah. Let's have it around the camera. Yes. So now for next week we know three mic stands. <laughs> and four cameras. Yeah, I was gonna say four <laughs> cameras too. Um, so you know the, the, it kind of That's going back to the the adoption issue and I, I was um 
By the way, just quickly going with the hair piece. Yeah. The one thing I was doing in class with the one, Jada, I think was her name. Yeah. Probably. And yeah, yeah I went. I gave her the oh, opening. Yeah. I gave her the opening to go to that place, right? The more internalized and she place. Took off. I mean, I she didn't really take it though. She she I did thought, a little bit, I but she didn't. Better than the other ones who came up and are just like, um, hmm. Yeah, scared. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was really good for her. Scared. No, I I like what, everything she said. I mm -hmm. think. Uh, You're talking about the skin girl, or the hair? Hair. The hair. hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the skin girl like. It was super raw of her to say the things that she said because it was really true for her, totally. and she didn't know how to express it. Yeah. And people are like, "Oh, she doesn't know how to express skin." And it's like. Because white people don't think about their skin. Yeah, most people don't think about most skin. Most people don't, right? but especially white Americans, yeah. we don't. Yeah, and like, so people with darker, <laughs> with more um, darkly pigmented skin <laughs> think about it, but only think about it often in like a very sort of narrow way, right? right. Yeah. Like, we, like, you know, one thing I talk about is, you know, we don't talk about the need for, um, um, for dark for people with darker skin to get more sunlight, right? They need vitamin D and folate and so on. So, um, but um, I did just the adoption piece though. I felt like that was a, I'm really, I would like to go back to that. So it's really cool when we do this, the first couple of days when we're doing the, the kind of, what do you know piece, it's really nice to um, have that opportunity to, yeah. to see what's live in the room, you know? Right. Um, and the skin piece, I, I was, I was like, she, you know, in fair, man, I was, well, obviously I can't say it was brave of her because once she's up there, she didn't know what she was going to talk about. No. And once she was up there, it's the volunteer like, volunteer part was the brave part of it. Not just to volunteer and yeah. not knowing what you're going to exactly. do. Yeah. The only one for whom it wasn't brave in any way was the Hong Kong. Because the he Chinese guy, yeah, and he already knew what it was, you know? <laughs> And uh, it, the, but that was also interesting because he didn't really know what was happening. Like he kind of did, but not really. And yeah. it's interesting because the uh, guy who asked the question was like, "What does the, the state-run media say?" And he was like, "Well, the state media kind of didn't really tell us much." And it's like, interesting. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, they're not going to tell you that people are rebelling against their country. No, and it's hard, right? Because the media. First off, look. Let's let's just think hear about in the United States where we have a where we have access to more news right I mean it's it's not you know we talk about a free media I mean free what, what's free right I mean you it's hard to it's free in the sense that you know a lot of stuff is available and even the, most of the stuff that whatever you want to find you can find but you have to have time and you have to have free space in your day to actually explore the the news or ideas and in, and if there are alternate alternative ideas not only do you have to have free space in your day but you have to have that consciousness and the awareness of to, to even know what it is you're looking for and so with something like hong kong that is so immensely complicated right you have to you you have to be able to frame it you have to be able to frame what what what's happening in china then what's in hong kong and the history and the history of the two and you know, you need a good two to three to four hours just to put the pieces together, just to line them up and then say, OK, now I've got them lined up. Let me start thinking about this from a critical perspective or an interesting perspective. And so it doesn't surprise me, just like in the United States, it doesn't surprise me. We just pick us any average Chinese 20 year old and say, hey, tell us about this one particular part of your world and they wouldn't know, you know, just like most Americans have no idea what's going on here, you know, the 20 year olds. So anyone, nobody knows, like we don't, we don't follow it. I mean, I, I am paid to do nothing but explore information and I, I'm like, it's really difficult for me to have, like, for example, this morning I was listening to a piece on Uber and why it is, so Uber just lost, you know, a quarterly, their earning quarterly earnings were down five point two billion dollars, right? So the question is, okay, why is Uber, you know, losing money in that way, right? And well, you know, I listened to this analysis of it for so first off, without listening to anything, I could probably 
maybe say more than just the average American, just because I'm a sociologist and I, I think about these things, right? Maybe a little bit more, but, you know. Um, but then I listened to this thing for 20 minutes and I thought, so that's what I thought, right? But then I listened to this show and I thought, and there were so many things that I didn't think of and hadn't thought of. And each one opened a door to a new idea and something else. And then I was uh, completely blown away by how much I didn't know about Uber, the gig economy, um, the sort of new wave of investments and so on. And so it was utterly humbling to once again remind myself of how much about life in the world I don't know. And even though I'm paid to to have opinions on things. So um, so anyway, that's where we're at. Um, all right, man. Um, what do we have? We're going to have a guest next week. Yeah, who's that? Uh, Jamali. All right, cool, man. Oh, yeah. um, okay, good. Yeah, Jamali, that'll be nice to have you come in and talk a little bit about it's that. funny because the fact that he's in florida so he can even give, give us an update on uh, a place in the country that's going through a natural disaster or who or what happened right, right. yeah hey um so what what's our opinion on hollywood pushing social movements like you know black panther female ghostbusters and you know um or just hollywood kind of opening those doors I would say I wouldn't say pushing so I wouldn't say it as pushing social movements, um, but I would say it as as opening certain doors and you know partly I I think it's a I think it's a a really a good thing um, in the sense that uh, I happen to be a person who really enjoys change and. Um, I just enjoy seeing different ways of being in the world and exploring them. So, you know, like a, a black, a James Bond character that is a, a female or a black female or whatever. Um, awesome. Yeah. I It's just like, okay, cool, great, love it. And um, I think what was really interesting with the Black Panther movie was how popular the movie was in so many different audiences and why that is the case like why that movie and not another movie that's that's made up a pri that has primarily black characters like why that one so for me that was just something that was really on my mind the whole time that that was really popular but i think you should watch um us and get out because those are the two biggest movies that have a prim like almost all black cast. Isn't Get Out? I thought that's mostly a white cast. Well, it's it's kind of both. Like they they have um like it's based on the thing of like white people, like white people wanting to have black qualities, and oh, it's just like an exaggerated right. story about that. Oh, so it has yeah. white and black characters, but the main character is black. And God, then yeah. and then us is almost exclusively black. Yeah, yeah. I'll like there's you know one what? black. Oh, there's one white family in the entire thing. I mean, it's yeah. very good. You know what? Well, yeah, or like any Medea film. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I, from Tyler Perry. Yes. <laughs> you know. Anything that airs on BET. I, I only watch movies on airplanes when I'm flying, like internationally. That, it's it's a hundred percent true. That's that's yeah. a fact. He, the man, doesn't know. own a TV. Yeah, so. you know it's really funny. Sorry that we're getting a little off topic, but uh, it was him, me, and Michelle in a Zoom call once uh, earlier in this semester, maybe like the last week of summer. And uh, Sam gets a call but forgot to mute himself, and so I, <laughs> Michelle, and I heard part of his conversation. It was with Comcast because you're dealing with their internet, and he was like, "Yo, before we even get started, just know I don't have a TV. I'm not interested in TV. I'm not interested in streaming TV because he just doesn't watch." TV because it's yeah it's not a part of your life. No, and I'm a sociologist of culture. Like, um, obviously, I'm a failed sociologist of culture <laughs> to not watch television. But you know, whatever. It's just time. And did you time. did you end up getting to watch any more Game of Thrones or because you no, start you started I season out how to watch it? 
I, I watched the first two episodes of the very beginning of the first season. I would help you out, but we got rid of our HBO. Yeah, Literally the day after Game of Thrones ended, my dad canceled the subscription. Yeah. <laughs> but I did. Wa- I started watching Game of Thrones on ep- ep- on series no, season six. Was that it? Uh, season six or seven? Yeah, it was on cool. a plane. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I watched the whole thing on a. Oh, I was flying back and forth. Wait, you to, started uh, in the middle. He yeah, started, started at the end, the, <laughs> almost. At the end. <laughs> I, it was good though. It worked. I started in the season where everybody died at the there was some <laughs> opening wedding or something. Everybody died, and I said, "Oh, this looks really interesting. What is this?" And like, Game of Thrones. Did said, you go oh, back I, and I start from the beginning? No. Did nah, you, I have that. you watched any of the beginning seasons? Yeah, no, I did. I watched. I went back to the first season. Then most recently, this past summer, I think it was, and I watched the first three episodes. But then I just couldn't. No, I watched the whole first season. I okay. actually watched I think he did season. actually watch Because I haven't watched season. Game of Thrones, but I know that when you start a TV show, you don't start at the end. Yeah, <laughs> unless you're a knucklehead like me. So It's true. All right, so what happened? What 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 else came what else came up in yesterday's class? What did we Well, um, here was here was a tweet from class. Yeah. Um, Confederate it was the Confederate. Is it or fair to uh, victimize conservatives when their ideals or ideologies and policies are leading to the loss of life in the United States. And I ended up sending, I just sent this person a tweet back to see what they meant by that, because it's very interesting how we're like, well, this side is pushing for the murder of infants. And this side is pushing for the murder of this. And it's just yeah. like, are, are we really all pushing for the murder of somebody? Well, you know, if you think about, if we just step back and say, all right, what's the, the you know, the sort of main contributor of, problem i'm not the main but oh I, I think they're talking about gun control i'm sure yeah but what about you know what about the the, the medical system what about automobiles what about you know like liberals drive cars liberals do i mean liberals they're in favor engage of abortion in, liberals do exactly so all you got to do is just take your mind to the place where you say life begins at conception it's actually not very difficult to do no and it's got you know it's going to begin somewhere so if you want to just say life begins at conception which once again it's not difficult to do you can say like well there's no way it does but i can say well this isn't like with flat earth argument right like the earth is not flat Dude, it might so, be. Yeah, you know, I've never been off. The, the, you know. I have another thing I have to recommend you to watch. There's a documentary uh, film on Netflix, and it goes through like uh, conspiracy theorists about uh, the flat earthers. And it's funny because at the very end, I think they're in Vancouver, like the main guys in Vancouver, and they go to like he's like, you know, if you look over there, there's I Seattle. Saw a clip from that. You what? I saw a clip from that. He's like, you know what? This is how I know the Earth is flat. You see that right there? That's Seattle. You see that right there? And he's like pointing. He's like, that's how I know the Earth is flat because I can see everything. And I was yeah. like, that. What? <laughs> but but what's really funny is that supposedly I think they did, at the very end they do an experiment where it's like six miles. They have like a post, and then six miles from that they have another one, and there's two holes. And they're like, if we have, um, if we put a light at the bottom hole uh, on uh, the far end. Then we will, if it, if the Earth is flat, I'll be able to see it because that's the curvature uh, yeah, of the Earth yeah. will block it off, yeah. or it won't block it off. But if it's if we can't, we'll have to put it higher. And so they end up doing the experiment. And he's like, "All right, go ahead and put the light on." Doesn't see anything. Go ahead and let's just see. Can you put it up to the second one? And then they saw it. It was like, of course you could see it because the curvature of the Earth blocked <laughs> yeah, it from yeah. the bottom hole. <laughs> so they did an experiment brilliant. for themselves to try and prove, <laughs> but it didn't end up working out for them. Oh, my gosh. All right, well, hang on. So going back, so <laughs> conservative conservatives. Uh, I, yeah, I don't um, I think anything that we, you know, liberals have this idea that somehow, you know, as they're, that they're doing all these wonderful things for the world. Meanwhile, you know, like driving in cars and using petrochemicals and flying in planes, flying in planes and using plastics and like, you know, participating in the erosion of soils. And one thing after another, it's sort of like, listen, just by having children and whatever, just by living, you are, you know, engaged in destroying this planet <laughs> in destructive behaviors. Yeah. yeah. And maybe, maybe not, you know, directly supporting, I don't know what, it, what would it be? Who know? I, I, you know, we can all pick out the one thing that we don't do, that's that 
is the one thing that we you know we can obsess about that that well th but at least i don't do that you know but we it's hard to hold a mirror up to ourselves and see all the things that we that we actually do so um i think that you know just it's sort of like americans right we look if we have the by far and away the largest military in the world and spend more money than any other country on weapons of war and sell weapons of war to other countries and give them away and so on. Um, it's really n not that easy to promote us as a country, as a peaceful country, right? <laughs> so, no. so or, or promoting peace or seeking peace. And so, well, you know, you can just say, well, so if you're a liberal here and you're working and you're paying taxes and you're like in any way supporting the government, whether it's, you know, like, Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden or anybody, one of these like three or four hundred people that are Democrats that are running for president. Um, how many of them are there now, actually? Uh, <laughs> it's worth four hundred now. All right. I think, but it either was, I think when they started the debates, it was 20. Cause I think okay. they had 10 a night. All right. So you nights. have Marianne Williamson and you have Bernie Sanders, but really pretty much beyond that, everybody is it seems to me to be he, part of this war economy so yeah there there's one person who is running who is like flat out against yeah hey you know what's really awesome about class is we have the guy from that turning point 2020 oh my god is that dude. awesome man it's that he's in class if you're watching <laughs> <laughs> i have nothing against you personally or your beliefs because i'm registered republican i actually wanted to have turning point here i just really hate turning point like Personally, this has nothing to do with the reflection of the class because people can do whatever, but like Turning Point just screwed over one of my friends so years ago. So Meaning that your friend converted? He was gonna, no, he was going to work for them and then literally he moved all, like he moved, he b rented out a place in Chicago, which is where they're based at. Oh, right, and then right. they were like, all right, we're not going to have you as a staff member. Okay, well, anymore. hang on, hang on a second. But that, all right, so not Turning Point, but somebody who worked for Turning Point screwed him over. Well, Char anyway, Charlie for me, for me, it's it's uh, it's just awesome to have to bring that perspective in. And the other thing, hey, by the way, I'm going to talk about uh, the cancel, culture. cancel culture really yeah. fast. We'll say something about it. you. You one of you can say something about that, right? I, so, but let me quick let me go back to this thing really fast, and then we will. Joy or Darnisha can say something about cancel culture more. But um, I am struck by how international just how brown and black the class is i will just say yeah. whoa sure. just off the hook yeah i mean i'm looking around for white people in there right or people who aren't yeah it's really intense and so just like the guy the the guy with indian ancestry right who's from hong kong you know we, there are all sorts of people in class like that um, so w there was a woman after class that that came up and and she is um, um, where was she? Yeah, whatever. There's it just seems like there's somebody from everywhere. So whatever it is that we're going to talk about, we'll actually be able to do that. Hey, so can, do one of you have a take on cancel culture? Like, is this part of you're part of this generation, right? Like, yeah, I think it's really Jake. Well, hang on, talk right into the mic though. I think it's really simple. It's kind of just um, another example of how people can't really think for themselves because you just catch a whiff of some type of... But what is it, though? Like, it's just, is... like, something mainly based on social media or happened between... I think it originated from mainstream culture, but I'm sure you could do it in between friends, maybe just as a joke, something simple. But something... There's something dramatic that happens, and then you say that pe that person is canceled. Like you don't support them, you don't God, watch yeah. their stuff. Like you just don't. So you cancel them from your life. Yeah. So what much. would I? Like so I could. Them. So I could easily fall victim to cancel culture you by could. just yes. saying the wrong thing. Honestly, yes. you probably have. Maybe. I have. Yeah, I have actually. <laughs> there have been people. I know Dude, you're, there are people you're, that you're ahead of the curve. People are like canceling you. I've been canceled by a lot of if people. If it was prominent, would have been was that two semesters ago, when the girl was like, "I think you're on a high horse." Oh yeah, <laughs> that, no, that, that, like semester. that probably would have been if yeah, that was she, a thing. She would have been like, "Sam Richards, you're canceled." <laughs> you're oh not, or like right, something. I got yeah. yeah, yeah. So she would just that would have been like that, but it wasn't the thing. I'm canceling you. Yeah. Okay. But there are cases, you know, when, you know, in the past, right, like that I'm reading a, 
a, a tweet or reading something and I'm I'm reading the F bomb or, or the N bomb and mm-hmm. now I can't I couldn't even do that. You know, there's a woman in at NYU is teaching a graduate seminar and she was it was on James Baldwin and oh. where James Baldwin drop talking about the end but like the origin of the end bomb I mean this is the, his work from the early 60s and so she's just this is she assigns Baldwin as this is these are graduate students and somebody complained and she was under investigation because she dared to drop the M bomb. She, she said it, or she assigned. She was them to reading. Read with it she assigned it. it, but she was reading something in class, and she, okay. it, 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 from him, she was reading one of his quotes in class from the book that was assigned to all the students. And she didn't just skip over the words. She's like, "Well, we're all reading this book. It's James Baldwin. This is his. Ooh, you know that's why he's." Music. And it was a white person who complained. It could by be the like way. music, oh, yeah. that's and that's exactly happened. Like There's music. been a couple of cases here at Penn State specifically. It's just like you have your your white college student, whatever party, or maybe even just in their own room. Everyone listens to hip hop or trap right. music, and you're just saying the lyrics. Yeah. So the conversation around that is, no, I don't care. You still can't say it. Yeah, exactly. Song or not. <laughs> so I guess that that would be like the equivalent. Well, in this case, this would be the example of probably, I would imagine, a social justice warrior, a white social justice warrior who's going to take up the cause right? uh-huh. and who's gonna, who filed a complaint against her, I think. Is what the, that's my, my recollection. It wasn't very long ago. I, read about it. I mean, it was just a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I get the, like, the N-word is it's a thing that certain people should not say, but at the same time, there's a such like if she's saying it because like it's in the text, I mean I guess but there's so many other things that you could say you could skip over the word completely, if you like if you know something that's gonna be controversial or like borderline could get you fired. There are so many other words you could say. I know, but when you're doing ball when you're breaking down Baldwin, if, if Baldwin it, was there, he'd be using it. You know what I mean? I mean, but that's oh, look, Baldwin. all I'm. Yeah, I, Baldwin I know. looked like me. He had a past to say it, but if you're yeah. just if you're a white lady teaching a class, and that's probably something you should think about not. Saying. Well, she's thinking about it now, and white people all <laughs> over the the I United mean, States are thinking about it now. But this is the thing, right? This is how quickly the can- whole canceling idea comes. Oh right? yeah, that yeah, that's really quick cancel culture so, right there. So if I had, so I'm thinking about going back in social 19 just four three years ago. Mm-hmm. Someone puts. Someone tweets, tweets out the N bomb, right, and puts it up there, and we put it up on the screen, and people in the back, let's say, hey, I can't, I can't read it. What's it say? Like you know, and I read it, and I drop the N bomb because I'm reading it. No one, even, no one really bats an eye. It's like, yeah, you, okay, that's fine. Moves shift forward, so like 2015, 2016, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe there's someone in the room that's like, oh, okay, whatever, but not. Nah. But 2019, that's cancel culture emerges. And, the, and so for me, what, the, the, what goes on for me is I have the – because I'm engaging in these issues on a regular basis, I have the, the, uh, the opportunity to learn – I'm ahead of the curve, if you say, Jeff, like to learn w- what it is that's going to take me down, right? So I just – get, get me canceled. Yeah. You know what I think it is too? It's like, okay, we see that you're, like, reading it, but if you're comfortable with saying it and, like, reading it in a quote, what's the, who, who's to say that you're not just saying it out in the world, out and about your daily speech? I feel like that's what the main, like, headspace well, is when you hear people do that. Okay, yep, exactly. So I think what I'm saying is, I hear that, and what I'm saying is, it's just interesting that just three years ago, if you were a student three or four years ago, you, you wouldn't have... Even you wouldn't have even had that thought. You, you in all likelihood, you that thought you just had right there. You wouldn't have even had it. It just would pass by. You'd move on, and you know, like it would happen, and you would go forward. And that's how quickly things change in this world, this dynamic world of cross cultural cultural relations, and and how cancel culture can just really emerge so quickly. And so, for me, if I don't stay up on things. If I'm not really listening and kind of get, just getting a feel for what's happening and what people are saying, man, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be canceled and be the front page of some 
media somewhere. But the collegian. Beyond the collegian, my fear is not the collegian. My fear is <laughs> CNN. You know. Hey, it'll so. be the second time you've been on MSNBC. <laughs> yeah. No, it's really. Right, you were on there before. Yeah, a couple times actually. Oh. I was on. Um, so hey, so this uh, blood, blood back to life. Uh, Singaporean-born New Zealander, currently living in the Netherlands, soon to begin a PhD in the U, in the UK on culture shock and feeling out of place. Wow, man. So, what? Um, you know, I think increasingly what blood back to life is. It just wrote like, or or your experience is increasingly the experience of experiences of more and more people in the world, and and we the good thing about it is that social media and just the internet allows people like you to reach out and connect with other people who have a very similar experience, whereas you wouldn't have had that in the past in the same way. You know, just like the cross cross cultural adoption story, right? There's like in the world of sociology, we have what's called personal troubles and public issues. I mean, the sociological imagination is all about personal troubles and public issues, and how we generally experience the world and things that happen to us as personal troubles. Like I'm adopted by a like you know hair, right? Or I'm adopted by you know a family that is not of my ancestry, and um, I experience that as just me, like some, and, and it's it's it, and so I have my own ex- experience, my own thoughts, my own feelings, my own behavior is shaped accordingly. But sociology tells us, look, thing is, you think it's just about you, but it's actually about all of the many people who have walked through, sim- who have tried on and walked the world in a similar, tried on the same shoes as you're wearing, and, and walked the world in a similar path. And that's the public issues. So, like, what you experience as someone who's been adopted cross-culturally, the experiences you have are not just yours, but they're actually the experiences of everybody who's adopted cross-culturally. And so what it means is you got to really um, just reach out and, and understand what you're feeling and what you're dealing with is not just yours. And it's so stabilizing, right? It's so grounding. It's so important to understand. Like coming out of the closet, man. Like that has been the big... Like, dude, when I was in high school and when I was in college, coming everybody who came out of the closet came out of the closet as their own unique experience and rarely had opportunities to talk to anybody else until they were fully out and then fully out experiencing the world. And even then, so many people just had the this idea that they were just locked in this own personal struggle and battle. Yeah, so yesterday in class, um, you said to um, the first volunteer about cancer, uh, cancer culture. Cancer yeah. culture. Uh, not cancer. Michael was his name. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was interesting because you said that coming out should be kind of how he like you, you mentioned it to your parents and they say nothing yeah, yeah but yeah. it's it's a little bit more than that like in order for us to have true sexual orientation freedom yeah um it's it's more so that it's not okay so his parent he said that his mom doesn't ever talk to him about it yeah right i have a very similar like yeah, in my life about you. because yeah. like besides my parents talking about my boyfriend like talking to him it's not talked about and like just the silence of it. So for instance, so the way they talk to him, they'll talk to him in the same way that if you had a girlfriend, they would talk to your girlfriend. Sure. Like it's they'll, like they'll have a normal no conversation with him. Yeah. But the thing is they react differently. Now my mom's not on Facebook, so it's not fair, but like just on social media stuff like that is, you know, when I post something on social media on my own personal accounts, that's my way of saying, this is what's going on in my life. And this is yeah. really important to me. And no one in my family likes the stuff that has my boyfriend and I in it. Oh, right. And so it's right. not just the fact right. that... Don't so make when, it public. When you come out, what the perfect equal world would be is that they would have the same reaction as if it was a girl. And in my 
like from what I've seen in other people in my life, whenever somebody mentions their opposite sex partner, they get likes, they get shares, they get comments like, oh my gosh, we love you. But like none of that happens for me. Yeah. So what would be yep. perfect is not just the, not the lack of acceptance because it's not like they don't accept it. Yeah. It's that they just kind of pretend it isn't happening. Yep. But then they'll still have a conversation. And I'm not saying anything bad about my parents because yeah. they're doing amazing. But I wish it was just a little bit further. Like my aunts and uncles, they came over to my um, apartment last year over the summer and Michael was there and everything was cool and we all had talks and my aunt was awesome but like she's silent whenever it like comes up in a conversation or like or like on social media or on social media hey glad to see you guys are doing really great right none of that happens yeah Yeah, that's the that's the the, that's the public side and when yeah when there are people who actually do support us they'll only tell us in private like they'll like the stuff on facebook but then they won't ever um there was somebody that met us at a wedding this summer uh, a family friend from years ago and she was like I keep up with you guys and I love you guys so much but like you don't comment that stuff and yeah. that's where the support matters because that's yeah, what people that's the see public stuff. Yeah. you know that, yeah that's really cool to hear that and I think that so what I was saying ironically it's, it's where you want it's like this world like in it's like with race relations right Ironically, where we want to be with all this stuff is to never talk about it explicitly because everything is so on the table that like, like going back to the hair thing, it's like, well, we don't have to have, Sam doesn't have to bring a bunch of people up to have this conversation about hair because we all know that we've all like really engaged. We're, we're all really engaging cross-culturally, multiculturally. Everybody has different friends of different backgrounds. We've had the conversations on our own. The, the, all the LGBT issues. It's like, well, yeah, of course it's great. But we're also having the back channel, like you're saying, conversations. Like we're, they're all happening. So well, ironically, the action, the end result is where we want to be. It's just the process is well, be really here's another thing about it's like I'm seeing all these comments. So many people are saying, "Well, will we ever get to the spot where everyone can say the N word? Why don't we get to the spot where no one has to say it at all? Yeah, exactly. that it's not just it's not even a descriptive term yeah. that has one race or another. And I mean, it's so tricky because yeah. well, that defines me in in my community. Well, but then in a perfect world where everyone is equal, we should all be able to say it. But then like Darnisha said, I mean, you have the freedom of expression. She said on the comments, you have the freedom of expression, yeah. not from the freedom of... Yeah, freedom of speech, not freedom from repercussion. You can right. say whatever you want. Yeah, Just yeah, don't yeah. expect it not to have a side eye or the extreme, like, get your ass beat. Like that's... Well, <laughs> well okay, so the irony, going back to the M-bomb, really, I don't want to stay on this too long because... But the irony is that um, we got to the play. You, it's it's the black community that like we got to the white people got to the place where we sort of learned, hey, you d- don't ever say this thing, right? Like you just don't say it, right? So if you go back to when I was the age of you all, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like you just didn't drop the M bomb. Some people did, right? And there were there were people who were clearly racist, and they did, and like they, the old school folks, right? Like okay, great, but the <laughs> not great, but. <laughs> Okay, no, but they, no, no, but you know, like they're not. They're just. Uh, it, it, there's nothing that was going to be done, Bold right? And brash. But the mainstream kind of you sort of learn, like, okay, we're not going to. It was a non-issue. It was a non-conversation. We never talked about whether we could drop the M bomb or not. You just didn't. You just knew, like, don't. But but black hip hop and rap music bringing it back up, right? Brought it back into the focus, mm. and then suddenly wait a minute this thing this word's back in our universe like it was gone for the mainstream of non like racist white society right and so the so that's the irony of it that's the odd thing it's like the 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 black community like brought it back into not the black community but some people in the black community so now we're wrestling with this word again you know what i mean and i'm not i'm not saying that's a good or bad thing it is what it is like great i mean you know it is i'm a sociologist like you know, my job is to observe what's happening around me and as little as possible make comments about what's good and bad and right and wrong. Just observe it. But that's one observation, you know. And now I'm wrestling with it. And for white people who say that they have the the, the card, you know, you have the hood pass or whatever you yeah, want to yeah. call it, 
Keep it to whoever gave it to you. That's yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, that's yeah, exactly yeah. how that works. Yeah. Like, for instance, my uncle who's black, I, I don't even say it to him, but if he was like, you could say it, I would only ever say it with him in the room. Yeah. Not even no other no other black person would even be in the room for me yeah. to even feel comfortable with saying it. But like again, I I still wouldn't. But yeah, same here, man. I I raise, the the words have sort of left my vocabulary when I was 13, 12, 13 or something. I just like it just not it's not just not part of it, right? So but okay, what else do we have? Um, um, someone in the chat brought up black fishing, which black Joy fishing? doesn't even know what that is. Yeah, what's so, you, you don't know, know what it is neither of like? you. I have no idea what so it is. I'm thinking about it since I saw the comment. I'm wondering if that's actually I don't know what I was wondering. So it's basically when white people, I think, is mostly like white girls nowadays doing it. Like they'll tan their skin to like almost my color. They'll have like black eth or ethnic hairstyles like cornrows or box braids um and then they'll just look black and people would be like oh well she must be some sort of exotic and she's just a white girl from like wait hang on do you have your phone with you yeah it's right here just like you just google that really fast yeah let's get the scientific definition would the that woman who i forget who I see a lot of people on like I literally googled it and most people are on Instagram being accused of doing it but there was a woman who was in some type of elected position oh right are you talking about, are you talking about Rachel Dolezal yes Dolezal whatever the hell would that would that be I don't black yes, fishing like like that's, that, that's the extreme well, Nisha, keep looking keep, are you yeah I'm looking at it right now um yeah it's basically just pretending to be black Oh so my gosh! Or using makeup and like your hair and stuff to pass for. Black. So it's not it's not black face, like but it's probably really trying. Appropriation. Yeah, I think that's just another form of appropriation. Yeah, it's it's not damn not near not close to blackface, black almost black like it's I mean, just I feel barely. Like blackface is different. I feel like that's yeah, yeah. blackface is definitely little, different, but this is close enough. This is like. So this is really trying to trying to go there to you know being part. Of, well, listen, man. So let me ask you this. Right. Mm -hmm. This goes to um, back up to uh, I forget who it is. The New Zealander uh, led Hello. back to life. When you when you travel between cultures, it's only a matter of time before you kind of want to you, you want to just kind of blend in a little bit, right? Like I think about when I was living in Spain, and and. I think it was the second time that I was living. I was 2000 and I don't remember 1996, maybe no 2001. And I was, uh, and the big thing about Spanish men was you sort of go out at night and you you have a sweater, right? And you sort of wrap the sweater over your shoulders and you tie it here. And Americans weren't really doing that. Maybe in New York, a few people, but it's kind of a European thing. But in particular, in Spain, people were doing that. And it's not that I saw that and I said, hey, I want to fit in so much as, hey, that's actually a really good idea. And and it's kind of cool. I just walk down the street and I'm doing what everybody else is doing and it's actually a really good idea. And there's this, and then there are other things where you see people getting certain haircuts and you say, hey, it's just a natural human motivation or desire to fit into to your surroundings in some way right see but here's the irony in what you're okay. saying about that because the girls will look like black and they'll have the kind of hair that we have and people will say it's acceptable then i walk down the street and people look at me sideways because i have the exact same thing but i'm exactly. actually exactly yeah 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 that's yeah, the cultural appropriation about yep that. exactly no 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 i'm not saying it's the same thing at all i'm saying like but I'm saying let's break it down a little bit. Yeah. So it's everything is on a continuum. So like the black fishing idea is an example. Let's put it on a continuum. Mm -hmm. So if you have a bunch of friends and like, you know, let's say you have all white friends and, you know, your white friends do certain things. It kind of works for white. It's just a white thing. And like you'd be like, okay, well, hang on. Let me just push into that a little bit mm -hmm. and see how it is. And then there's the thing where you would go all the way, like the, the one woman who was part of the NAACP. So yeah. 
my take always in this world of intercultural relations is everything, almost everything's on a continuum. And so black fishing would be one of these things on a continuum. We could talk about it a tiny little bit, which is totally understandable. We could talk about it in an extreme, which in certain cases could be understandable as well. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like, just think, like, when you say it's on a continuum, like, I feel it's, like, either, like, okay, like, acceptable to, like, for this situation, like, blackface and disrespect, like, it's closer to the disrespect. Yeah, me. okay, no. What it is is it's not, and, and I'm, I'm rarely, this is one of the things in class that I think yeah. is really important for people to get. I'm rarely ever saying that something is or is not okay, but rather I'm just trying to break it down and understand it. So, like, I get why you know i've had i had a i've had white students who grew up you know with all in 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 a, in a black community or a latino community and all black or latino friends right and okay. they were just as white as white could be right parents are white they're white but they just happen to live in the community and all their friends and they just there's absolutely no difference in the way they dress the way they act the way they talk the way they think if you didn't see their white skin, like the, I've had various students and TAs, if you did not see their white skin, you would have no idea that they were any different than their friends, right? Like a kid from North Philly, I can yeah. think back several years ago, right? Had two friends, three of them were all TAs. The one kid, you wouldn't know. Close your eyes, you have no idea, right? But they grew up together since kindergarten. So, okay, well, there's that's one of these cases. It Of course he's going to be like them right that these were they were it wasn't just them there was a wide group of friends it's just the three of them happened to come to penn state so um or black students let's say who grew up in an all-white community mm -hmm. who the how they talk dress think etc cetera, etc cetera, are just okay you know it's just like it's beyond talking white or acting white or something right which that's a whole another thing to talk about talking acting white like that's we're not going to touch on that Do, yeah but i'd like it would be cool that that would be a cool thing to talk about in class actually yeah what does that mean right what's it mean and what are the implications of that yeah just breaking it down so for me anyway one of the things with my teaching or one of the things that happens is once again i'm i'm so often just pointing stuff out but not evaluating it you know and I think sometimes that's hard. People are expecting me to to judge something, right? To make a statement about whether it's good or bad or right or wrong. And that's, in some ways, I'm trying to leave that up to students, but I'm trying to actually break things down to understand how it is and why, how they happen in the way that they do. Um, some things can evaluate, obviously, but, you know, yeah. So I live in the in the hood, and I have a white neighbor who's the blackest person culturally than me. <laughs> he says he continues. He said he uses the N word, and no one bats an eye. Yeah, I mean, this is just this is life, man. This is the life that we're. It's, it's complicated. Yeah. It's immensely Can I just say that in my perfect world, no one would have to use the N word because I don't even feel comfortable using it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Now, listen. There are so many things that would change. I think the thing with blackface, black fizzing. Thing. <laughs> and the thing that's different with where people grow up at and like the comment I said and no one bats an eye it's shared experience and your ability to pick and choose which side of the fence that you're on yeah for the people who participate in black fishing it's because they'll take these different categories of black culture and beauty to be able to be seen as exotic where if I give you a black girl from North Philly, she gets to be looked at as intimidating. Yeah, or if she was... Or if I if I had an encounter with the police and you had an encounter with the police, yeah. it's a very different experience with how you... It's taking it to have a momentary, uh, just a moment in time where it's like you get to benefit or be viewed in this way yeah. as opposed to the full experience of walking through the world as a person of color. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or the the person, he, you know, here's an example of the this guy. He was, a, I think he's VP or really a, a big corporate exec of some big corporation outside. And he lives outside of Philly. And he was coming home from his vacation in Europe with his wife. And the police pulled him over. Or they tr tried to stop him. And he pulled into his own driveway. 
and he lives in this big massive mansion outside of Philly and big huge circular driveway and driving in his Benz or BMW or something. I don't know. This was just a month or so ago. And the cop had him out of the car at gunpoint thinking that you don't live here. How could you possibly live here? And this guy, he's a major, you know, executive. And so there are all sorts of things like that for sure that I think a lot of times we... There was a video I just saw yesterday, like the same thing. Like he, the guy, I think he couldn't get his alarm system to turn off, but it was his I house. I saw that exactly. too. And the cop dragged him out of the house in his underwear. And was like, you... The- That's a little more complicated though, right? Because that guy came downstairs with his gun, right? And I he's think licensed, that, right? I think that's two different stories. There was one where... Um, there was a guy who was asleep at his house and the alarm went off and so he went to go check on it uh, turned it off but then it was too late and the security poli- or the security already called the police and so they came and then I don't no I, that's the, it's the same story but he well, there was a gun I, well there was because I know there was gun. another one where there was a guy who came at, with a gun in the middle of the night and was like what are you doing? Like, this is my house. And then they shot him. The other guy, I don't think was shot, but no, no, he wasn't shot, but he also did. And he said, Hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a gun. And they said, okay, we'll put your gun down and so on. And they still didn't believe him. I mean, it was just like, well, I, man, there's, there's a YouTuber that I watch. I've been watching his podcast for years. And, um, when swatting first became a thing, he was one of the first people to get swatted. And for those of you who don't know what that means, it's people on the internet call the police and say that this person's like doing this horrible, cr- horrible crime, and they end up calling the SWAT team and they go out to the house. Well, this guy, he has like he has a shotgun, a couple of rifles, a couple of pistols. Like he talks about it openly on the show because he's a Second Amendment guy, um, and he, he heard some rustling outside of his house and he went out onto his porch with a shotgun and he was like get off my property like who was out there and then they were like the police and so he instantly put his hands up but like just to think like his number one thought wasn't oh my god i'm white they're gonna shoot me like the one that i think the thing that really put race relations in my head that really made it home was what is the first thing that you think of whenever you get pulled over by the police and my first is oh my god i'm gonna get a ticket yeah exactly oh my god i could go to jail or i could get shot or they think right especially if i'm driving like my, if I was driving my dad's truck, my dad just bought a new truck like last year, and just driving that down, even though it's a car, they might be like, oh, if this black person's driving this really nice vehicle. We don't know if it's his, blah, 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 blah. And like, especially if I'm in Pennsylvania, like, yeah. it, it could be really scary. Like, yeah. if your first thought about a certain thing isn't your race, that's privilege. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, that's right. If it's not, yep, yeah, that's right. That's what I think a lot of white. A lot of people in the majority don't f- don't fully uh, grab onto that. That's that's the privilege piece that I you don't have to think about that. And listen, it doesn't matter that, relatively speaking, yeah, it's just that's a that's a piece. Mm-hmm. Man. It's really d- disorienting and depressing, um, and it's really sad that we're still talking about it. But that's kind of what so much of what the the class is about is to con- continually remind ourselves um all right listen uh the three of you what what else we're all these things are things that we're going to be addressing throughout the semester and we'll come back to we're just kind of touching on it and once again um checking out the technology and seeing what we have to do in the podcast but I think we should have Wink buy us all <laughs> SM7Bs. <laughs> buy what? A microphone. Oh, yeah. It's like $400 a pop. Yeah. Like I said, this episode of You Can't Say That is brought to you by World in Conversation. <laughs> Go out in the world and talk to someone. <laughs> conversate. No, conversate with someone. Yeah, <laughs> go out in the world and conversate. <laughs> all right, so. Um, I'm excited for this semester. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be a good semester. So you know how you said there was a lot of black and brown people in the class? Yeah. There's also a ton of gay people in the semester. Oh, my God. Yeah, what's with that? Half the class yesterday. <laughs> I've noticed that over the past, like, two years. Yeah. Just walking down the street, I'm like, twink as hell, theatrical as hell, gay as hell. Yeah. We were Michael and I were at Walmart the other night. And we walked by, um, this, do you know, have you ever heard the phrase twincest? Uh, no. What is it? Oh, Twincest. No, no. no. It's when 
It's when two gay guys look <laughs> exactly the same. Oh yeah. Because oh it's it's There's actually nothing wrong with it. It just makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because when you think of what you're attracted to, you're attracted to something that it's almost like most things that we think is true is because of how we were raised, the environment that we're in. That's also a lot of how we get into figuring out what we're attracted to is stuff that's around us. So for instance, my friend, he just realized that he has a type and that his type looks not like his mom, but like has the same color hair, has the same color eyes, has glasses, just like his mom. But here's the thing. It's everything. But I mean, he's a mama's boy, but like Uh, everything that you're involved in, in your life will get you to be attracted a certain way. So gay guys are stereotyped to be attracted to somebody who looks exactly like them because twin cest mm. and so we were walking by and we've seen so many gay people since living in state college like, when i moved here i was like oh my god this town's so gay and there was like eight gay guys that i met but like now living here it's like every time i go somewhere there's another gay person there which is cool like it's awesome but it's also it it can be uncomfortable with being in a relationship and having gay guys because of the stereotype of Okay, guys, sleeping with everybody. But it was funny because Mike and I were walking through the Walmart and we saw the, the the twins together, and it was just like, oh my god, they look exactly the same. That's all. Can and do you use twin cest for women also? For just lesbians? Men. Yeah. I guess you could, but you women women I've with never lesbians. Heard that it, just men? You've only heard it for men. I've only ever heard it with with gay guys, but because with women. Mm, it's not that every lesbian couple I've seen tries to fit into the male or female stereotypes of yeah, being in a yeah, relationship, yeah. but they're more likely to do it. Whereas gay men have been like, um, you know, everyone asks, uh, especially Michael and I were asked, who's who has the pants? Who's the man in the relationship? Yeah, and it's oh like, gosh, God, yeah. we're both men. And we both yeah. wear pants. Sometimes we wear shorts. Sometimes No, this. but in your case, it would be who wears the dress. Well, like who cooks and does the dish? You know, this, that's because right. that's a stereotype thing, right? right? Who cooks, does dishes, who but does the things that wears the dress? That yeah, should yeah. be the responsible. Adult. Well, it's funny because neither of us fit into the one stereotype. Yeah, like exactly. no, nobody ever does. No, no one ever, ever does. does. Yeah. Now that it's, but you know what? Once again, that's where we're gonna. You know, we're moving beyond those those conversations. Like we're really moving beyond them. People won't ask things like that. You know. Um, and that's also, pretty kind of sexist to say the whole pants and dress thing, you know, signing gender roles. But that's that's just another thing that a social that is a, what is it called? A social something warrior? Social justice, social justice, justice warrior. warrior. They would pick up on that and nail you to, to hey, the wall. Yo, John, yeah, no, I'm totally sorry. Not. We'll fix the description. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, I put it. Man. I put 1 p.m. I, I apologize. Yeah. But yeah. um. We're still a work in progress. Hey, that was the name of the podcast, a work in progress. (laughs) Hey, so listen, did you, you, did you catch that? Uh, Can you just run that camera up to, you can't say that. Hey, we're going to, we're going to, once again, we are, so the, the purpose of this Friday afternoon podcast is to have some conversations that grow out of the Tuesday, Thursday, social 19 class. Um, and we want to always have a guest or two who just stops in and calls in. And it's ideal that the guest comes in on both video and audio because that just feels like it, it will work the best. And, um, and we're, it's really to go deeper into the issues that we've dealt with. And so, but we're just getting the technology together. So we're not, I think we should also be drinking like tea or coffee and yeah. have that oh, yeah. be a normal thing. Okay. Because we can't drink actual beverages that are for adults yeah. because okay, we will Penn State's a dry s- campus. Instead of the, the water bottle. I've been repping another university at Maybe the same we time. have to. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You are. Yeah. Old Dominion. I'm a trader. No, my sister's no. She, that's her alma mater. And my aunts. And so, they were partners with us for a little bit, too. They were indeed. Yeah. Because when I first, first week that I worked here, Sheffy, uh, who was our global coordinator, she um, had to go down to Norfolk to do something with NATO. Yeah. And I was so upset because I didn't know she was going down because she flew down. I was like, I would have driven literally for you because I've driven down to Norfolk so much. But who do you? The monarchs. All right. So 
So listen, <laughs> the monarchs. Yeah, okay. Dude, do you know their, awesome. their phrase is we are monarchs? We are monarchs. I like that. We're butterflies. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Actually, Imagine no, the, if the Penn dude, State football team were dude, butterflies. Dude, the monarchs are monarch lions. Oh, monarch lions. Okay. But that's funny because my mom, she... So uh, my sister and my parents were down at uh, ODU doing a tour of campus, and there's a huge monarch, the their lion, in the middle of the quad, a huge statue. And my mom... Is it a lion with a crown? Because that would make sense. I don't know. Oh, yeah, monarch. Yeah, exactly. But um, my mom was like, do you know what... Uh, she was like, monarch, that's a butterfly, that's stupid. You know what the sound a monarch makes? Rare. You know what the sound a Nittany Lion makes? Rawr! She did that, and my sister and dad just booked it. They started rocking so fast. But all right. No, it's just a, it's a thing. You can't understand it. It's like a Nittany Lion. Do, well, do you know what Nittany means? No, no one knows actually. That's what I mean. That's what I mean like, it's something to do with like the mountain actually. I know yeah, that, but no one but... knows where the name came from. So yeah. what I've heard multiple times, but I've also heard multiple times that there's sixty thousand students that are here, but it's like forty five ish or something. Um, but Mount Nittany was named after the mountain lions that were there, and now they're so, extinct. Well, so, right, they're extinct now, but they were there, and then supposedly whatever local Indian community lived here, they used to say that it was you know the Nittanys, so the mountain lions. So technically speaking, our the Penn State Nittany Lions are the Penn State Lion Lions. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but I, I, I think it's that. one of those things that it's not it's all I don't think it's, it's folklore. True, all right, so point. listen, we're gonna ch- we're gonna jump out here. Drink um, soy. <laughs> <laughs> so we will well yeah, we'll be we'll see uh, we'll be back on Tuesday and in class and for more what do you know? We're gonna yeah, we're gonna have another episode of or another class of what do you know? Of students yeah. weighing in on different topics and so on. We have some really good topics coming up on Tuesday. Question. I saw some of the topics and I was like, okay. That's, that's going to be an interesting, like, this yeah, going to be interesting how it develops. Sh- yeah, we'll see. I'm not saying anything. I know, I know. Um, All right, so we'll, we're, an, we're off. An interesting question for the stream real quick. Uh, so we're going to put the podcast, the you shouldn't say that, or you can't say that. Um <laughs> <laughs> it is, but I can't. I have dyslexia. Let me learn. Um, so we're putting this on Anchor.fm, and Anchor is a website that allows us to broadcast a stream into multiple places. So we're able to put it onto iTunes, Spotify, etc. Uh, for the stream, would it be easy for us to also put for you to listen to um, the class, or should we keep the class on YouTube? I just am curious on what the people who are well, watching. Well, it's going to always be on. YouTube. It's going to always be on YouTube, but would you also want to be able to listen to it on your phone, like Spotify or iTunes or something. Just let me know in the comments if you're like, no, I, I want to watch it instead of just listen to it. Then we'll just put this on. But if everyone's like, yeah, it's, it would be a great idea, we'll go ahead and put it on Anchor as well. Um, which reminds me, anchor.fm slash you dash can't dash say dash that. Oh, man. All right. It'll be down big. below. We gotta, we gotta, we It'll gotta be down below in the description. All right, man. All right, so see y'all. See everybody. Thanks, Joy and Darnisha and Jeff. Drink your water, people. Have a nice day. All right. Yeah. Be high. Drink your water. It's always warm. Woosh. Ready? Are we off? Yes. (laughs) Hey, so listen, man. Uh, So let's think about. Oh, these chairs are nice here, aren't they?